first. I think we need to wake up some people in Sanders. Yeah. We, we need to wake up the whole neighborhood. We need to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to tell these people, move out of my neighborhood. We don't want you in my neighborhood because you're greedy. Um. <laughs> Assistant Vice President for Financial Affairs at the University of Houston. <laughs> and currently, the University of Houston is involved with a lot of labor issues, including slave labor and tomatoes. So, we're not really big on slavery. We don't think Ms. Mesa should be big on slavery either, especially when she's representing our school. So, we'd like to uh, speak out about that and just voice our opposition. We also aren't a huge fan of the people that come to work every day, work really hard to keep our campus running, feed us, and look after us in other ways by cleaning up the mess that some busy students can make, being treated like they're less than human beings and not deserving a living wage because every worker in the world, and especially the workers that affect us every day, deserve to be paid and treated like human beings. And Ms. Mesa, as someone who represents the University of Houston, should also appreciate this. And the fact that she doesn't just shows me that she's not doing her job. So we're here to remind her what her job is. So, I guess, uh, what do we want? Justice! Yes. Justice! When do we want it? Yes. Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! The people united will never be defeated. 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 El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. So these workers that we were talking about that get subjected to slavery and poverty wages in Florida, a lot of them don't get treated like human beings because they're undocumented people. Does that matter to us? No. no! Do we think any human beings deserve to be treated as less than human beings? No! Should Miss Mesa? No. No! no. So, Miss Mesa, are you going to step up your game? She should! No! <laughs> no! Yeah, I don't know. She's being quiet today. Maybe she'll come out later. But, um, another issue with Miss Emily Mesa is that she doesn't seem to work well with students. She uh, just gets a little too worked up. And though we've been trying to create progressive change on campus for three and a half years now, or three years and three months, actually, Miss Mesa likes to go around and lie about our group, saying that we give death threats to employees. Whenever we've never done such thing, we go in there, we're peaceful students abiding by all laws. Whenever, in fact, they're the ones that threaten to call the police on us, whenever we break no laws, they're the ones that call the police on us to lie whenever we break no laws. They're the ones that subject us to abuse, verbal abuse every day, emotional damage to some of our members when they're attacking our family, and it's just not quite accurate. Oh, We're here to uh, talk to Ms. Mesa about Make sure you get the uh, this will be good. Labor violations at the University of Houston. This is can walk over power. Because of the sound. This is First Amendment. Should I, uh, what? Why are, why are you interrupting the entire neighborhood? Oh, uh, we have a sound for a minute. Miss Mesa, your neighbor. Your neighbor. Oh, here, I can give you a flyer. Yes, please do. About why? Hi. Are you stupid? Would anybody else like to speak? Is there a policeman here? I would like to uh, see yeah. your permit if you have a permit. Sure, I got it right here. Who is he? I think you are. Oh, no. so, the neighbors are here. Good. Let me do it on his Here's the permit, but I'm not going to take it out of my hands. He lives by himself, so he wants to do himself. I'm sure he does. This is the permit. What does it sound like? So, would you be Tim O'Brien? That's me. You should do it. Yeah. 
for today. Six, 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 eight, eight. Well, I don't know what it looks like, but it looks good, I suppose. It is. Look, I know, I know the Maces. They're decent people as far as I know. She, you know what she said to us Tuesday? What? That we made a death threat to an employee. She said that in front of my three-year-old daughter. My three-year-old daughter now thinks that my dad, her daddy goes around making death threats. And her whole reason for bringing that up is because we're trying to fight for people to be treated with dignity. We're trying to fight for people to be paid with their worth for the work they do. And she just wants to make money for big corporations, which we're not really into. It's, it's Look, dude, she, works, she works at a school. It's not exactly big money you're talking about. It's a billion dollar corporation. It's time to deal with the issue of nice people. To who? To the workers. The, the Those of us who grew up, up but I mean, in the you know, old you know, South, you know, Houston, but like I did, I grew up in New Orleans. Million dollars on drinking. Know that whenever there was a quest for like justice, yeah, particularly yeah, yeah. racial yeah. justice, the answer was, yeah, our taxpayer dollars aren't you are disturbing people that are working nice people. people. Yeah. 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 There is no trouble here. That's television. You're the troublemakers. Yes. Let's listen to her. That was always the response to those who seek justice. You're the troublemakers. We have no problems. Of course, the exploitation and oppression is hidden. It's kept out of sight. You live in neighborhoods like this, and you don't see how the vast majority of people in the world, and a great number of people in this country live. You keep out of sight the problem. And when people bring the problem to your door, you say, why are you disturbing us? The reason we want to disturb people is what Martin Luther King said, we need to create a tension in conscience. People need to be faced with the injustices into which they are complicit. Yes. You may not be the person who is keeping the tomato pickers in slavery, but when you buy their products, and you know you're buying their products, and you know how those products are produced, and you still buy those products, then you are complicit in the injustice. And that needs to be brought home to you if it means coming out in your neighborhood where everything is real quiet and nice. Good. It is time that the veneer of niceness in this country is stripped off so that we can see the ugly underbelly of oppression. And that is our job. And when people tell you, oh, you're being rude, or you're a troublemaker, we're just trying to be nice. And all you do is keep at us. Do not let them make you feel bad about yourself. Not me. I remember going, I'll tell you a story. I was working with the ACLU in Louisiana back in the civil rights days. Went up to this little, uh, well, they call it parishes over there, not counties. Went to the jail because the guy had called me who had been arrested without charge. And the big fat deputy who ran that parish jail in East Feliciana Parish. Oh, he was so nice to us when we met him at the door of the jail. But then when we said, why are you holding this man without charge? It was a black man, of course. He said, oh, we're just trying to be nice, and you won't, you won't let us be nice. That's what we're up against, folks. The people who or in those upper offices, they are always polished. They, they don't come across in their self-presentations as mean people or ugly people. And in truth, they aren't mean people or ugly people. They're just immoral people. They've got a failure of conscience. They are willing to take big salaries 